She's coming up, you guys. Hello. Hello, hello. It works. It, it works. works. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi, Chanel. I'm really, I'm glad that you guys are both agreed to do this. Thank you. Of course. Um, really appreciate it. Of so course. before we jump to questions, I'll do the same thing that I did with Misty. If you want to introduce yourself to everybody really quick. Okay. I'm trying to tilt my phone so I don't have to hold it the whole time. All right, so um, for those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm Chanel, and I live in Los Angeles. Um, I'm a singer-songwriter, so that's loaded in itself, but uh, I pretty much do music full-time. Well, not full-time right now, but that's my main passion, and I'm getting back into it um, full-time soon, I hope. And uh, my favorite Backstreet Boy is Alex. I'm definitely one of those girls. And uh, Nick and Kevin... They're thrown in there sometimes, so. You know how you can tell that you're an AJ girl? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, I, I, sorry, it's like I started doing it like 18 years it's ago okay. and can't undo it. It's weird. Uh, <laughs> Got it. <laughs> but so, I can't well, say AJ for purposes of the video. <laughs> it's okay. I call him. He, he's your boo. You call him what you want to call him, okay? Cool, cool. Um, so, yeah, so I'm going to ask you the same questions that I asked Misty, even though some of them are, like, can be venue-specific, because you guys might have different experiences with different venues. Totally. So, the first question is, how early should you arrive at a, at, at a venue for VIP and for the soundtrack party? Okay, so, my experience with VIP and soundtrack, I have not, I've run into the boys just, like, out and about, being in L.A., um, but I have not done VIP or soundtrack since 2005. Um, but gotcha. in general, my experience is just get there whenever the email says that you have to get there. Um, but don't be late because you want security to notice you and kind of either my experience is they notice me and they're like, hey, you come over here uh, and we're going to let you in at this time. But if you miss the boat, then it's just a little bit chaotic and a little bit confusing. And then you kind of panic because <laughs> you can't run. Uh, you're not like as fast as everybody else. And when I did do sound check for the Never Gone tour, um, it was at an outdoor venue that sadly um, was closed down and torn down last year. Um, but there was a long walk from the parking lot, like kind of down this hill to the amphitheater that was, it was kind of like, built inward and so um I couldn't really keep up with the crowd at the time I went with my best friend at the time and my mom and um, I use an electric scooter for long distances so I can go pretty fast but they had already like kind of started bantering and like checking mics and things like that so by the time I got there they were like I want to say a third of the way into the first song um and I had to park my scooter at the top of the stairs and then you like walk down to the front. So I was, I know this is one of the questions later on as well. Um, I was able to just kind of park and walk down to, uh, there wasn't really a pit. So what they did was like, they put chairs in the pit um, and like walk down to the front. So it was kind of funny because um, the way they were like lined up on stage, Kevin was in the middle with the piano and Howie and Alex were like off to the side where I was walking down the stairs and Howie just like stops and like points at me and I'm like oh crap what's going on <laughs> because I was like the last one walking down the stairs and Alex just he like elbows him and then he was like hey like giving him this look like hey look and he just like waves like stops what he was doing and starts waving and I'm like oh hey <laughs> yeah I love that's kind of cool that's awesome so yeah so basically get there when they say to get there and don't be late. Yeah. And, you know, if you're okay. familiar with the venue, you kind of already know, like, where to park um, and things like that. And this particular venue was in Orange County, and I had already been to, like, several shows there before. So I actually – I had to, like, ditch half of school. But, um, you know, I just got there. Early. I just got there early, and it worked out. Cool. Yeah. Well, so one thing that's kind of piggybacking on that that I will say – 
if I was, if this was like my first time, you know, actually going to a backstreet thing, which for a lot of the people that have been messaging, messaging me, it would be, mm -hmm. um, if it's going to be a local venue for you guys, I would treat it like the way that I treat a job interview. I never just like wait to the day of to actually go to the job interview. Exactly. I will go, I'll make the drive like a couple of days beforehand just to scope it out. So I don't have any like factors out there that are just going to throw me late. I would mm -hmm. treat it the same way you're familiar with where parking is at and that kind of stuff and how it works. Don't just wing it the day of. I just, my, the way my anxiety is set up, I can't. Just yeah, totally. Stuff. I'm the same way. Like, uh, Recently, I went to a show that was not a Backstreet show, but um, I hadn't been to this venue since the Johnny No Name tour in, like, 2000. So it was like, I don't know where we're going to park and how far parking is from the door and if we have to wait in line or if, like, I can talk to someone at the venue and not wait in line because I don't want to be standing the whole time. So definitely do your homework beforehand if you're not super familiar with the venue and where parking is because in L.A. you have to drive everywhere. Um hmm. So oh, that, that's kind of my tip with, like, unknown venues. Gotcha. Cool. Um, I would also look into these venues, guys, and see if they offer valet parking and see how much the valet parking is because it might mm -hmm. be worth it. Or if they – sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Sometimes – this is rare, but if you are ADA, use a wheelchair, walker, canes, whatever, sometimes – there's discounted or free parking. Um, so that's cool. And also, I don't, I don't know if this applies, like, nationwide or if it's just California, but if there's metered parking in California, as long as the meter doesn't say, like, no parking from this time to this time, you can park at the meter with your blue placard all day and not have to feed the meter. Awesome. Good to know. All right, so next question. In your experience, has there been a bathroom nearby if you get there really early and you're waiting a while? Okay, so aside from what I said earlier when I, met, when I messaged you, like, basically, I make it a rule not to pee during the show um, just because, like, I don't always get uh, wheelchair-accessible seats, so sometimes I'm, like, closer to the front or wherever, and I just don't want to deal with the crowds. Um, but if you are, like, waiting in line or you're going to VIP or sound check or something like that, I definitely suggest, you know, knowing your body, going to the bathroom beforehand. Um, there, there always is a restroom nearby. I did have one experience, um, and this kind of goes along into my – I didn't meet them this time. But, like, my seeing them, meeting them stories, which we can get into later, um, they were playing for – what tour was it? The Inner World, like, this tour, the second leg of the tour they played at – the forum in Los Angeles and um, I had seats on the floor which was probably not my smartest choice just because I wasn't super close I was far back and I'm the opposite of you Kim I'm like four foot ten so I was wearing <laughs> shoes like this tall um, but I had to use the restroom and so I asked the usher I was like where's the nearest restroom and she said oh go down this hallway and you're gonna see like these big like muscular burly guys and there's a restroom to the right so I'm just minding my own business walking to the bathroom. And I was with my younger brother at the show. And he goes, hey, they're right there. And I, like, look to my left. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> and they're doing meet and greet as I'm, like, walking to the bathroom. And so they basically told me to use the bathroom that was just for, like, fans that were doing meet and greet because it was close where my seats were. That's kind wow. of fortunate. Sometimes things like that happen um, where – I don't want to say it's special treatment, but you get the opportunity to just kind of sneak in places. Gotcha. I, I say that that goes for any fan in any situation of any capability. Don't miss your backstreet chances. Yeah, if, I, if, I couldn't. If, I was kind of loitering. <laughs> yeah, it's an opportunity. To have no shame. Guys. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Like I said, I will adult diaper this situation if I have to. <laughs> um, I will straight go crazy astronaut driving across the country adult diaper okay oh i believe <laughs> it I, i've done crazy things but um that was yeah. cool just ask like hey where's the nearest bathroom and you know if you're with a friend and you know you're able to to go by yourself independently and like you don't want to use the buddy system i would just be like hey i have to go and speed off and come back and if you're by yourself you know try to make friends with people in line 
most of the time they're nice and they'll hold, sorry, I have an itch. They'll hold your spot for you. Mm -hmm. so. It's important to make friends with the people around you. I know a lot of people that are watching these vlogs say they have issues with anxiety or social anxiety and talking mm -hmm. to people. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's so easy to suspend that at a Backstreet thing because yes. you're not the only one who's like that at a Backstreet show. Oh. And Backstreet Boys fans in a Backstreet Boys environment, yeah. except for some reason on the cruise, <laughs> are good people. I think the cruise um, makes everyone a little crazy. See, I don't, I don't know if it's just being on the boat or if they pump like special air into the atmosphere on the board. I don't know. But people lose their minds on a cruise. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, important to make friends with the people around you. 100% agree. Um, <clears throat> okay, so she also, this is a, the, all of these first four questions were from Bailey. Okay. She wanted to know can the ones in the wheelchair sit in the front row of a sound check party? Has that been your experience? So, like I said earlier, that was my experience the one time that I've, that I have done sound check. And the only reason I haven't since then is just that I was 10 when I became a fan. So in the past, like my parents would buy tickets for me. And then after college, once I started working, I'd purchase my own tickets. And just for financial reasons, like in LA, the tickets are ridiculous sometimes, especially if you want a good seat. So it's like, okay, can I do like two tickets or can I do the whole thing? So I just haven't been able to have the sound check experience since then but hopefully if I do Vegas again or for the next tour um I'll be able to and I think it depends on the venue like if you're someone who is able to walk or um transfer out of your chair then it's definitely possible especially if you're there on time or a little bit early and like security walks with you if there's not, like, set up seats for people to sit, if there's, like, a pit situation, um, they might try and help you to get to the front. But it just really depends on the venue and where you're going. Like, for Vegas, I did not do VIP or soundtrack, but I had um, row A seats in Section 102. So I didn't have to wait in line, um, like, during the day or anything like that. So, it just, like I said, it just really depends on the venue and the type of show that you're going to. And if you kind of make a relationship with the security person that works for the venue. Gotcha. And I think that section that you mentioned for Vegas, I think that's one of the sections that Misty mentioned as well. Mm -hmm. So, that's good to know. All right, cool. Um, Bailey also wanted to know, so I know it's been a while since you've done like a meet and greet thing, but has it been your experience that they will give you enough time to talk to the boys a little bit during picture time or whatever? Yes. So, um, I have had lots of random experiences that weren't like legit meet and greet experiences, but the like structured meet and greet experience, um, they give you time. Like, even if there is a line and they're like going through the girls like they it doesn't matter what you know Q would say or Marcus would say or other security they break the rules <laughs> and it's really great that they they make the time even if it's an extra 30 minutes if it's an extra squeeze of your hand if it's hey I blinked can we take another picture um they really really do make the time for you 